Hello, welcome to a second Forest Focus podcast of the day for the second day in a row. It's been quite the 24 hours or so when it comes to Nottingham Forest and their fans. After sweeping season ticket price rises were met with a huge backlash from some, but certainly not all supporters, while support groups have also voiced their dissent to the news. Joining me to, joining me to discuss all that and what Forza Garibaldi have said today is Forza co-founder Greg Mitchell. Greg, evening, good to have you with us. It's been a busy day for you, but how are you doing? All right, yeah, I've managed to fit in one of these days at work that people claim I don't have. So, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long day. And then just been over to Radio Nottingham. And do you know what? When I got there, there was a penguin, a chocolate bar waiting for me on the uh, on the table. And I thought that's the type of nice gesture that we should have on this show. <laughs> I'll mail you I'll mail you 64 packs of penguins. <laughs> really what cheered me up. Was it? What flavour penguin? I, it's melted in my pocket, so I've only just managed to. Oh, it's a red it, one. That's the right. original. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, Not the orange ones or anything like that. Got me out. I had a penguin there. for years. <laughs> I'm more of a yeah. more of a Kit Kat man myself. <clears throat> uh, right, as we said, then it's been quite the 24 hours. Big, big hike in season ticket prices. The kind of average of 24. percent But I read Forza's a statement with a bit more detail on it. It's not gone down. Well, it's gone down really badly. I have been looking tonight and I see it's maybe it's a generational thing. Facebook seems to be more pro club, Twitter seems to be more uh anti what the, the club have done. What's just your general thoughts on it as as Greg Mitchell the fan? Oh, I don't read Facebook anymore. Um my thoughts <laughs> on it it's been tough. I've had friends message me who disagree with me and have said their reasons why, and it and it's just such an impossible situation because nobody could truly say that, that they want this price hike surely nobody can like truly stand there and say oh yeah that's that's acceptable it's not you can't raise prices by over 20 percent and just say there you go take it or leave it someone else is going to have your seat because that's what they did say um so it's been a it's been a hard couple of days because we knew we were in the position in the fortunate position to try and do something about it and the only way we knew to do so was direct action and action as quickly as possible and unfortunately this is the only way but like I've been thinking all day I've loved some of the responses and some of the comments about how much these displays think people think they can help the team and will help the team but also it's Man City at home from that first minute the atmosphere is going to be incredible anyway we're, we're making a point and we're making as big a point as we possibly can but Make no mistakes, after the first minute, there'll be a, a great atmosphere in that stadium. But how do we make the club listen? And for us, it's the only way we can we can do something about it and draw attention to what's been going on in the last day or so. We'll, we'll come on to all that. I, um, you make lots of valid points. I just want to kind of try to assess, and it's difficult to do so, but how much do we think the last 24 hours have kind of hurt the relationship between fans and club or certainly fans who feel the way you do because I can't remember a backlash to like this to any decision from the current ownership for what well, I would say since as long as they've they've been here and it was certainly exacerbated in my opinion by the two tweets last night which were horrendously ill-judged at best I would say and they angered a lot of people because we in temps are on here and I think we temps you know put over the, the club side of it well and he got some Black for it. He wasn't agreeing with the club. He was putting over their point of view. But I certainly think those tweaks exacerbated matters. How much do you think? Uh, how much damage do you think has been done, or will we not know that uh, for a while? Because obviously, it's going to depend on results on the pitch as well. I would say it depends on what wider area you're looking. For certain people, the damage will be irreparable purely because they've been priced out of the thing that they've loved and cared about for so many years. There'll be seats not with those same people in next season because they simply have had to make the the tough decision that other things are more important and they just can't afford it anymore. When tickets have gone up by that amount, over 60% in some cases, of course you're going to get people in that stadium who just cannot go. So the damage is irreparable for them. How could they sit there and and say, oh no, I still love this, this owner and what he's doing, everything he's doing is great because... You've been priced out of the thing you've loved long before the owner was here. And I know I've said it already today that the owner has done some really good things. However, 
gosh, we need to hope he reconsiders what he's done <laughs> this past 24 hours because it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And all the stats and figures they've brought out, they've they've been manipulated. They're, not, <laughs> they're just picked and chose what sounds good and hope that we fall for it. But football fans are a little bit more coy than that. We've, not been, we've been here before, sorry. So we know what to expect. Yeah, I, mean, I certainly don't think it's the case that, you know, everything that this ownership group's bad and they're terrible or anything like that. I just think this is a big misstep. And just on that, those tweets, I mean, there's good people in Forest Media Department and savvy people. I can't believe that they would actively put those out. So, yeah. Yeah. And I've got friends at that club who I've made friends with through all the work we've done through Forza. And it does hurt me to think, you know, some of those people might see it's a personal attack on them, which of course it isn't. You know, we're just doing the one thing that we feel we can do to help make a change because, yeah, it's one game or it's one season, but there might be whole generations of fans that this changes the course of who they support or what they do for the next 50 years of a weekend. And they're the ones that this should be about, not just saying, oh, well, we're in the Premier League, you've got to take it now, that's what we pay, you pay what you pay. But then it goes up 25% next year and then it goes up again the year after. And when does it stop? You cannot accept change like this. It's too drastic. It's too short notice. And also they've created this fan advisory board, which I've been talking about a lot over the last 24 hours, that they have not used there's some good people on that fan advisory board who are willing and have been hoping to help. They've been asking for the information that they haven't seen. And then they've been blindsided like this. And I saw some fans last night saying bad things about them. And trust me, you know, this the people on that board have tried their hardest to get the information and find out what was going to happen. And for whatever reason, probably knowing the reaction that they were going to get, it wasn't it wasn't forthcoming. Yeah. And the timing's really weird as well. I mean, we're right in the middle of a relegation battle. We've got two home games left. I don't know why it's been felt necessary to announce it now, especially before the Everton game, which is a win- much more winnable game than the City game. I really don't understand that. Um, it's, what do you say? Go on, sorry. No, there's so many things, timing-wise, that were wrong and that were clearly purposeful, like the deadline. The deadline to renew is the evening before the last game of the season when potentially we will not know what league we're in. How can someone with a family of four that pays for all those season tickets say, am I really going to spend thousands of pounds taking my kids to this for championship football? And I know we support them through thick and thin, but you also have to you know, weigh up what is good value and what you can afford. It, you know, it's those things that just haven't taken the fans into account. And we've seen things banded around for years about fans, not customers. But we've always known that Nottingham Forest is different and we do things differently. And that's why we're a club that every other club comes to our ground and says, wow, what an atmosphere, what a place. I wish we were like this. And yesterday that's changed for me. And they can change it back. They can still do something about it. But the only way they're going to do that is if the voice is loud and the voice is, you know, pretty much unanimous. And, you know, it's just something's got to happen soon because it could be irreparable for a lot of people. Yeah. The waiting list as well is a thing that, you know, you've got that hanging over your head that people are going to think, well, actually, yeah. I will. Well, really they know what they would do. The last game. Yeah. yeah. Because people mm. think, well, you know, as the club have not so subtly made it clear, if you don't renew, then someone else will have your ticket. Oh, and yeah. And... I... Go on. Well, I was just going to say the other thing I was going to say, just picking on what you were saying there, is it... So we ended the last two seasons on the podcast saying, you know, these are great days and they won't last forever. I didn't think they'd fall apart. Not that they've fallen apart now. Like you say, there's still time to turn around. But in terms of the, the good times and the special feeling around the club, it's pretty much evaporated now, I would say, hasn't mm. it? Yeah. For what? For money I could never imagine having, but in football terms, it's going to create two and a bit million pounds for this season. That's nothing. That's that's absolutely nothing in these terms. If they think this was the solution to financial fair play problems, then we're in bigger trouble than we thought we were, because it isn't. There's other ways that we could have done things, sponsors on shirts, you know, all those things, different things around the ground. We could do more without attacking the fans that have been through everything with this club. And it does feel like an attack to a lot of people. I know others understand it, and that is absolutely their, 
you know, prerogative. And I, I get it. I get how certain people can accept this. But when football is such an important thing for so many different walks of life and accessible to so many people, to do this is really alienating a hell of a lot of fans. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of people who are going to say we're being very over dramatic. You know, it works out to, I think it's, say it's 44 quid a game. <laughs> Uh, that's comparable to a, a night out <clears throat> that you know you would pay normally. Why are fans getting so amped up about it? I mean, it is only the season tickets. It's not we haven't seen the tickets for the other uh, brackets yet, which you would imagine will be will be higher. But mm. what do you say to people who say, well, actually, it's a business. You know, there's always supply and demand. There's a huge demand out there. Why shouldn't the club run it as a business to make as much money as they can to sign the best squad they can? Because football isn't just a business. If football was a business, most clubs would be out of business by now. <laughs> because it just isn't like any other business on earth. You have a customer base that cannot change product. You have a customer base that isn't going down the road to support Derby because it's £10 cheaper. It's in your blood. So it's never just a business. It's never just a business for those fans in the seats as well. And clubs have to appreciate that because when the good times are here, it's great for everyone. But when the bad times are here, you need those fans so much more. So it's all right saying, you know, it's only going to cost you one night out or 44 quid. That's for this season. These price hikes, they'll never go down. So if we don't try and do something about it now... You work out how much extra it's going to cost you over the next 10, 20, 30 years of your life if you're lucky enough to still be going forest then. If fans have a united voice now and try and change it, you're going to save a hell of a lot of money that you can be putting into that club or that bar down the road over the next so many years. So it's so much more important than just this season. Yeah, and you don't get people like, I mean, I do my shopping in Morrison's uh, most weeks. If Morrison's are in financial trouble, I'm not going to have a whip round to try and keep them going, you know, to pay the wages for another month, like football fans were doing their teams in trouble. You know, it's a different, it's a totally different thing. So I, I'm I'm with you on that one. The other thing I don't understand is, I, I'm not a business expert. I'm not a businessman, although technically I suppose I am now. Um, is it smart to kind of alienate your core customers? I don't understand why. I mean, you know, the it's not going to be worth two million quid, but people now might think, well, actually, I'm not going to spend, let's say, it's 85 quid on a shirt next season. I, actually, I'm not going to buy that shirt and I'm not going to go to the club shop and I'm not going to go to the fan zone. I'd rather go to a different fan zone, maybe a certain pub on Meadow Lane that's particularly good and not send the money the club's way instead. So I don't, I'm not saying that's going to negate the, the, the money <clears> gained, <throat> but surely there's value in being liked by your customers all the time isn't there yeah and i thought the the owner liked getting the praise and liked getting the adoration from the fans or or what have you but what the club have clearly in my eyes they've clearly said over the last 24 hours is if you're not going to sit in that seat and if you're not going to buy that shirt someone else will so does it really matter to them short-term thinking no as long as they stay in that Premier League and as long as they keep getting more and more successful, but we will end up like one of those clubs with the rubbish atmosphere and the disgruntled fans and we keep going. We can't just say the excuse of we're the sixth cheapest in the Premier League. It doesn't work like that and it shouldn't work like that. Of course, we expected a price hike, cost of living, everything. We understand that it was going to go up, but... You know, you've got a club up, up the league who's price hike by 2% and their fans have been in uproar. Chelsea, they haven't had a price rise in something like 15 years. For us to suddenly do this after the loyalty shown by so many fans and everything else that's gone on, it, it just cannot sit right. And like I say, I know people are, are upset with how we've decided to to go ahead and and make our point as loud as we can but you know what if what if it can make a difference and it can show this club just how important we believe this is not just for the football team but for the city and prices were high last year and i think fans are more forgiving because you know yeah we got into the premier league so obviously you have to pay more i think it's just the scale of it it's the 24 percent that the I don't know how you can justify that. I don't think you can. Uh, I, I think, though, and particularly for me, and I've said this repeatedly, it's just around the age group thing more mm. so. Like, 
uh, people of my age with a decent, you know, decent enough income can and will pay it. But the, I was talking to someone today and they were saying, a lot of people said this, it was a 190 quid or so for their 17 year olds and now it's going to be 600 and there's worse cases than that. And that's the thing that uh, I find the, the most disappointing and the most egregious um, thing personally. Talking of uh, very good pubs uh, near Meadow Lane, then uh, the Trent Navigation are the sponsors for our podcast and Rick Parfitt Jr. is coming to the NAV. Uh, to play there straight after the Chelsea game. It's free entry. Here's a little 30-second teaser of the kind of thing you can expect. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Forza's statement today then, uh, what you said in the statements, and also, interestingly, a couple of things that were said on Twitter around uh, how difficult it's been occasionally to get these uh, displays put out, including the Fulham one as well, uh, pre-match didn't go down particularly well that was a university claimed afterwards so that was certainly interesting but the main headline is that you won't be doing the planned displays uh before the man city game and you also had some interesting things to say about the fan advisory board and what you want to see and we'll talk about what you want to see happening next but uh what made you when you sat down as a group i guess decide that you wouldn't do the the displays before the city game because it is an elevation in uh just putting out a statement what was the thinking um it's something that we've been close to doing in previous occasions, to be honest. And there's been times this season when it's been hard to to actually get a display off the ground and get going. So I think the, the relationship hasn't been as strong as it could have been recently anyway. Um, but it was just the, the most powerful thing we could do other than, you know, not turn up at the ground. But you, you can't expect anyone to do that really or... There's other things been muted by by fans online saying about not singing Mullican Tire. And they're all powerful things that just show the passion and how important this is for people. Um, so, yeah, it was just an obvious thing that quite a few people in our group decided was a the most sensible decision we could make to try and force a different view on what was going on. You've taken some, I don't, criticism's not really the right word, but I've seen a lot of tweets from people saying, yeah, we love what you do, we're totally on board, and we agree with what you're saying about the pricing, but uh, taking direct action uh, hurts the team because, uh, you know, the we've seen the power of the displays with Gibbs White's display against Fulham and uh, stuff like that. Uh, what do you say to them, those people who are disappointed? The club can change that. If the club... <laughs> reconsider this isn't like i don't mean to sound like almost like if the club reconsider what they've done then i'd be the happiest person on earth to make sure a display was before that man city game i really would but like even in the real world you know people go on strike and they don't want to and it can destroy them and it but they're looking at the bigger picture what really upsets me is Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but you see people online and it's only a minority saying, well, I'm all right. My ticket's only gone up 80 quid. I can afford that. What about the person who sat next to you for the last 30 years who you consider a friend who's hyped that much to them? They just can't make it anymore. You know, just and us as a fan group that's managed to to get this popularity and, you know, the, the good plaudits over the years have realized if ever there was a time that we had to act if we were honest to ourselves then it was now and this was the most obvious way to do it um so what do you want to see happen next obviously there's you want to see the reverse course on this uh, and i guess reconsider what other bit stuff they have down the pipeline in terms of other pricing structures around membership and you know if matches do go on <laughs> general sale then i guess there'd be a, a hike coming there that you'd want them to review now well, for starters, consult the fan advisory board. We've got a member on there and we thought they were doing great work. There's been at least two meetings where a lot of positive discussions never managed to get any solid info out of season ticket prices for obvious reasons now. Um, but call an emergency meeting with the fab. Explain exactly why they had to hike this. Was the, the club in that much financial crisis that they've had to completely alienate part of the, the support to say you know we need this club to survive and this is the only way there were no other options or can 
the powers that be at the club persuade the owner somehow because you know obviously he makes the final decision if he didn't want this price cycle didn't need it then it wouldn't have happened make them reconsider somehow somehow try and get them to realize what they've done isn't isn't a good thing uh what i'm just trying to find the exact wording of uh what they said the reason for doing it i mean basically they're saying uh the new f uh psr rules link it into all kinds of stadium income and the field at forestville they have to uh you know get all the most money they can to to compete i guess is is their argument and temps put the argument as well people can watch last night's podcast as well with temps saying you know basically it's economic reality much as he doesn't like it and others don't like it so that's why that's their side of it but uh yeah okay i wanted to get uh, greg's take on it and i know like i said earlier not everyone's going to agree with what greg says uh, i'm sure greg's used to that in, uh, yeah and it is i hate i do i hate I hate falling out with you know friends and but it's just so important this to to a lot of people it is and it's just i want my mates kids to be able to go to forest when they're eight or nine and just be the next fans that are there for the next 30 40 years and you know this is just too important to let it slide and and use the lazy excuse that we had to do it because we didn't have to do it there's always another way we all understand there had to be a slight increase but nothing like this Excellent. Uh, we shall leave it there. Uh, hopefully people have found this uh, at least informative and provocative, uh, whatever your take on it is. And if you have, do us a favour, uh, hit like on the video, uh, do subscribe, you can become a channel member and give us a good review on iTunes. And we shall be back tomorrow with, uh, we'll get back to talking about football now for the rest of the week. I think this will probably be the end of the uh, ticket pricing chat yeah definitely uh so it's me and temps tomorrow discussing the everton game in full and then i spoke with uh ped from toffee tv what's his great real name, guy peter i think i met him in dortmund and uh him and baz they are superb people absolutely brilliant guys so i'm looking forward to hearing what he's got to say probably won't he's agree with funny. it all yeah, he's a great guy. No, he, he's star. quite direct, isn't he, about his own mm. team? What you saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got plenty no. to say about Everton. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting what he said about them tactically as well mm. uh, and how they played against Chelsea and how they'll play against us. And it's probably as I expect. Uh, 300 crosses into the box of the match. <laughs> called, yeah. I think he called it war football, which isn't too <laughs> encouraging. So Good old get your tin hats on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He doesn't like him much either. So yeah, uh, check that out on Friday uh, and then Saturday, nothing. Nice day off. And uh, Sunday we'll have the post-match show with Mark and Mikey after the game at Goodison Park. Right. Uh, Greg Mitchell, thanks for your company. No, cheers for letting me speak. I know it's uh, it's tough for everyone, but I know it's, what is it? The most important of non-important things, but we shouldn't lose too much sleep over it and hopefully it will get resolved soon. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Like we say, it's not always black and white with the ownership. They're not Everything they do is great and not everything they do is terrible. It's just that this yeah. one has not been well received at all. Right. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Have a good evening uh, and we shall see you soon.